I'm conducting a program with the LSO that is um, that comprises three pieces. I would say that they are three tone poems, two of which are known as such, and one that is a mini tone poem. Um, the program starts with the, the ballad in A minor, or ballad in A minor, by Samuel Coleridge Taylor, it, it, written in uh, 1898. Um, and it, uh, we follow that with lists, Franz Liszt's um, Di Ideale, uh, based on a Schiller poem. That's 1856, 1857. And then Ein Heldenleben, A Hero's Life, by Richard Strauss. The tone poem, first of all, what is the tone poem? Tone poem is a piece of music, usually in one movement, that has an extra musical program. It could be literary, literary, it could be autobiographical, it could be both. Um, it could be about an idea, it could be about a place. Um, and if we take, for instance, the ballad, when we think of ballad, we think of Frédéric Chopin. He wrote four ballads for the piano, uh, all in 6-8 uh, time. All start relatively slowly and then develop into tempestuous pieces. Uh, Samuel Coleridge Taylor, by the way, an English-born uh, composer of color, who sadly died at the age of 37, really tragic, of, of pneumonia. Um, someone who, by the way, Elgar, Elgar admired and helped, and the publisher Novello thought he was a genius. So it's, it's a real loss, that. But this piece starts tempestuously and has this gorgeous uh, melody uh, in the middle, somewhat sentimental, but very, very beautiful and I would, innocent in a way, and then uh, stormy again and tempestuous and then uh, uh, lyrical again and, and it ends very, very brashly. So it's, it's based on those Chopin uh, ballads which do tell a story. The story is not revealed but there's no question that he's telling a story. So that's why I call it a mini symphonic poem and it's um, it's a, it's a wonderful piece, actually, and a lovely opener. Uh, but he takes Chopin's model and reverses it. So fast, slow, fast, slow, fast. The Ideale of Franz Liszt, well, Franz Liszt invented the tone poem. In the 1850s, he was playing around with form in general, and he, um, though uh, this piece, the Ideale, was originally planned to be a three-movement symphony. He thought the better of it and decided to make it a one-movement piece, taking Schiller's rather dark poem about searching for ideal and even in the face of loss and despair, somehow maintaining some hope um, towards the light. Um, he turns it around and makes a kind of a, a, a more dramaturgical story, the loss the, of hope, the loss of the ideal could be a person, it could be youth, which is probably what it is. And then looking back and feeling nostalgia, but, uh, but uh, not only melancholy, but euphoric nostalgia. It's very, very beautiful. And then um, disillusionment again. And then uh, finishing in a, in a great flourish of, of hope. So it's a manipulated piece, using a poem, but turning it into its own story. But he wrote 13 of these, of which this is number 12, inventing the genre, and was hugely hugely influential to, to all the composers that came after him. The composition uses sequential writing a lot, which, which means that he'll take a phrase and repeat it then in a different harmony. 
And he'll repeat it again in a different harmony. It gives him a platform from which to surprise us with new sounds and new colors, um, each time heightening the intensity. And so you get this very romantic, you get very romantic spasms of, of expression. Um, uh, the piece is quite exciting to conduct. I'm doing it for the first time, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it re all his music requires a belief um, because um, you have to love his music for it to come off the page. Because of, of this repetitive nature of these phrases, each time must be a novelty, must be a discovery. So the sense of discovery is very, very important. And that I'm very much looking um, to discovering with the orchestra. We finish with Ein Heldenleben, The Hero's Life of Richard Strauss. And yes, the piece is autobiographical. It's about the hero, and we are presented with the hero. But Strauss has too much... Uh, common sense and good humor to know that he's not really a hero. But he's, he's in a way having a laugh at himself. The important thing is to know that he presents the hero, but he also presents his adversaries. And the adversaries in his case are the critics. And as triumphant as um, as confident as the music is at the beginning of the piece, that's how spiky and ugly and disturbing the music is when he paints the picture of the, his critics and all the obstacles he has to come uh, uh, towards in his life. There's a wonderful painting of his wife in musical terms, I say. She is slightly perverse, slightly coquettish, uh, always changing. These are his words, by the way. Always changing, totally unpredictable. Um, ne you know, or, and he has a, a he basically writes the scene of a marriage. He's trying to get his work done. And she's nagging at him, and oh, you know, and you know, almost to the point where he explodes. But then, a love scene ensues, and it's this incredible love duet in music, one of the most beautiful things. But then he must go off to battle again, and live his life. And we get perhaps the most controversial part of the piece, the battle scene, where you you hear and see him fighting against his critics. So you have all this cacophonous music uh, of, of the forces that are against him, and he as, as the hero, and he wins in the end. Then he pulls back from life, and we experience his good works, and he calms down and and you know, who wants to plant seeds for the future? And, and, and we go through an extraordinary um, lexicon, uh, slightly later on, of snippets from all his other, from many of his other works, some of which um, were pieces that uh, were not as successful at, uh, of, as others. In particular, one, his first opera, Guntram, which was a flop. And he never really had a flop after that, a real flop. And he never got over that. I mean, with all the success that Richard Strauss had in his life, he never got over the fact that this opera was not well received. And so you have little bits quoted. Um, and he, you know, goes through his life as you do as you get older. You know, you think about what you've achieved. And then he resigns in fulfillment together with the help of his partner, and you have one of the most touching and beautiful endings, music of acceptance, of resignation, but of acceptance, something that Strauss would do at the end of his life uh, in the four last songs. He was so able to capture this, this emotion or this state of being, very, very beautiful indeed. 
huge orchestra, um, eight horns, um, and it makes quite a racket. But you have to balance that with the lyricism of the lyrical moments. Um, I performed this many years ago with the LSO, um, and I have a wonderful memory of it. So to come back to it is a really special treat. You expected a, a soundbite of three minutes, didn't you? <laughs> yeah.